So you're probably wondering why I've put such a title about learning Hindi quote-unquote scientifically. What do I mean by this? Why am I doing it this way? Why not just study Hindi like any other person? Why not just take a class or something or follow uh, you know, some random guides on the internet on how to learn Hindi? Why, why not just do that? Why not just um, experience it as everyone else does, doing something that's fairly typical? And the reasons for this are... A kind of um there's, there's one pretty good reason for this which is not really related per se to hindi the reason why i'm learning hindi besides this by the way for those who are interested is i have family from india my wife is of an indian ethnicity and uh, she even did her university degree in india so we have family there and hindi seems like something that makes sense to learn for that but the major reason why I'm learning this language isn't because of anything to do with family or anything like that. The actual skill in the language itself is actually more secondary, which is kind of a strange thing to ask. Like, well, why are you learning a language then if you don't, you're not really so interested in learning it, per se, in itself? And the reason is because as I've been studying other languages, I've decided that I think it would be quite an important thing for me to do to be a tutor in other languages besides Hindi. And I see Hindi as a really, really good opportunity to explore different ways of how we learn languages. So, if you've been on my channel for any length of time, which I suspect most of you probably haven't, um, I actually learnt a good deal of Portuguese through a Bible um, back at the beginning of this year, during Lent. And this was to test partially the idea of comprehensible input and its effectiveness. As um, the, I think his doctor, Stephen Crasson, has talked about, he will talk as if all you need is comprehensible input and this is what is the most effective way of learning language. Now, what did I find in this? I found he was, you know, by and large, pretty right. Um, I, found that ev I found that even now, I still have a lot of um, Portuguese that I can recognise when I just pick up a, a conversation or something like that. I go on Discord, someone might have written me some Portuguese or something like that. Like, I can I can kind of get, like, a decent grasp of it. But I wanted to see if that, whether or not this was actually the most optimal method. And there's a similar method that uses comprehensible input, but is actually different in a lot of ways. And that's what you see here on the screen. This is a breakdown of different resources in Hindi that I'm going to use to try and follow this second method, which is basically presented, uh, as, insofar as I've received it, by a academic called Paul Nation. I don't know if he's a doctor or not, but he's he's pretty well published. If you go on um, go on Google Scholar and look at his um, you know citations, they're quite high, right? So he'll talk about a different method from Crasson, and I wanted to try this out. It's something that, that probably makes more intuitive sense to most people watching here. So he has the idea of the four strands. And the four strands are, as you see here, comprehensible input, explicit grammar learning or explicit, you know, language instruction. You have comprehensible output as well. You have like, diff this is kind of different from Crass and I'll explain in a bit why, um, or at least how it's different. And then finally you have fluency development tasks. Whereas from all I've heard of Crasson, he will only advocate for the first comprehensible input. So what do all these things mean? Let's assume that you don't know anything about anything I've just said here because you know you might have just come from wherever and you might want a bit of an explanation. I'm getting onto it already you know it's, it's already been a few minutes into the video and I'm just about now explaining what I mean. So explicit grammar learning is basically what you do in a lot of classrooms which is you sit and study the grammar rules of the language and you internalize them and this also involves things like Anki and you know deliberate study in the way that people are typically used to in school. Now he will recommend this because it is somewhat effective and he'll say if this is spaced out more it can be very effective and to be honest when I was doing the comprehensible input stuff I kind of agreed but now to get into what comprehensible input is. Basically you take texts where you can comprehend some of them disagree it's between 95 and 98 percent of the words you can understand and you just mass read them extensively. It's, it's called extensive reading in some places. The lower number is called by um, Dr. Um, Alexander Arguelles as realistic reading. And basically, you just pick up texts and read them. And as you read, as you read more words, you can figure out the other words based on context. 
this is all that um all that Crassen really recommends, as far as I can tell. I might be wrong. Now, Nation says this is very powerful to the point where he'll say, well, you know, if you want to make a really good language course, just add, you know, 10 minutes of extensive reading and that will improve the quality of the course very significantly. It's, it's evidently a very strong factor. But unlike Crassen, unlike Crassen, Nation will say it isn't everything. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is true. So... That's what comprehensible input is, finally. Thirdly, you have comprehensible output. So this is things like writing and, um, and you know, um, speaking. Now, as I said, I'm in a pretty good position. This is kind of why I think Hindi is probably um, the most practical language for me to learn at the moment, actually, in terms of actually fully experiencing Nation's model of what an ideal language course would be. Because my wife happens to know some level of Hindi. She's not perfect. She, um, she's she been told that um, she talked a bit like a child in India, and I think this has to do as much with, um, as much with, like, vocabulary as it does with, um, you know, various kinds of talking. It's not actually quite clear why they, they said that. Um, so I have someone to talk to, and also I can journal. And the idea with this is that, you know, you enforce... Like, part of it is that you, according to Nation, enforce the ability to write and the ability to speak by speaking, which I think is, I mean, he says, you know, it's common sense. And it sort of is. I mean, I've observed in other languages that I've studied, at least one in one case anyway, that this does work. I can produce, you know, fluent, like more fluent sentences, even though I've got a very, very small vocabulary in this particular language, right? But um, he also, not only besides this common sense, he also cites a doctor called Swain, or an academic called Swain, who I can't remember if it's a man or a woman, but what he or she says is that basically, these comprehensible output situations provide situations where a learner will listen to the way they talk, and they'll become aware of what they're lacking in, and so they can reinforce this with, um, with other practices. I think, specifically, Swain zeroes in on consuming a certain kind of comprehensible input to bring up the level. So we have this uh, comprehensible output as well as comprehensible input and explicit grammar instruction. And then finally, we have fluency development, which is essentially doing the four typical skills in language, um, you know, in languages, uh, re uh, reading, speaking, uh, listening and, um, and writing, doing these quicker. So one of the really good examples that um, the nation brings up in one of his talks is this idea of when you're going to do. Uh, fluency development you have a writing task and the idea is to pick something that you know a lot about and then you write as much as possible in your target language uh, within a 10 minute window and then you count the number of words that you've written and plot it on a graph so obviously this goes by with time and you kind of gain the motivation as you see yourself improving in how much you can actually write there's other ones as well um, to do with speaking you there's one where you take a partner and you explain for four minutes a particular topic and then you move on to someone else this is of course uh, nation is more focused on classrooms um you move on to another partner and then it's explained to you in three and then you explain to someone else in two besides this this three minute person there's there's a, there's a lot of these um there's a few of these different um different systems that uh, the nation talks about and i think i'm in a pretty good position to go about implementing that so i'm approaching hindi with this this mindset as opposed to simple comprehensible input which i think is 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 i wouldn't say maybe impossible but it's made very difficult by the script so um i think it's devanagari i'm i apologize if i butchered it uh i don't i don't know um i know i know very little hindi like I, i've i've looked at one lesson today and i've heard you know my wife occasionally speak it so this as you can also see from the title is going to be the f first diary and it's going to be for the first month so today um i did a little bit yesterday i originally recorded a take i wasn't too happy with yesterday so i've decided to record another take and this is going to be the first take for the first month so this is going to take us till roughly about the 4th of um of september now this is going to be my very beginning month so this is going to be things like mastering the script getting the basics down now what am i going to do in this first month well you can see here what i'm going to do it's kind of hard to find a comprehensible input for um, for Hindi at a very, very basic level. There's actually a few storybooks where there's English on one side and uh, Hindi on another. But I want to kind of get 
more of a of a grammatical grasp on the language first. I noticed with Portuguese, despite the fact that I know Latin, that I found it actually quite difficult um, dealing with verbs in Portuguese just by comparing a Portuguese and an English Bible. So I'd like to have a pretty good idea about how the grammar works. I'm not going to do anything too obsessive. I'm not going to do, um, you know, there's there's this one thing in Latin called the Dowling Method where people will write out the grammar um, the grammar tables. Uh, like 200 for, for nouns. I think it's like 200 for adjectives. And then you've got like the other different verbs. And verbs are quite complicated in Latin. So it goes on for a very long time. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be basically sticking to the exercise, maybe doing a bit of practice Besides that, just enough to get the knowledge in my head. I think um, when I was when I was studying uh, Latin a bit more, and I was trying to grind certain crucial words into my head, which I probably didn't need to do. Um, I probably would have picked them up eventually, although it did help. Um, would I? I just take the um, the, the various um, the clensions in this case. So this is like how the the noun is changed dependent on its um, its role in the sentence. I understand Hindi has something like this as well. Um, and I just I wrote it out 25 times, right? So that wasn't too obsessive. I think it took me about half an hour for the for the, a lot of these words, and they and in that case they did kind of stick. I don't know if I'll be doing that for this, but for the first month I'm going to be basically focusing on textbooks and on this um, this series on YouTube called uh, Learn Hindi Through English, which appears to be. I initially was hoping it would be comprehensible input because they said they kept grammar to a minimum. But um, having given it a little bit of a look, there's quite a lot of grammar going on. The, the problem with, with Hindi, which is actually quite surprising considering it's one of the most spoken languages on the planet, is that there's actually fewer resources in English than there, there is for Latin, which is really weird. Uh, you, you'd think that there would be more, but um, it doesn't seem that there are uh, that many. There's like, I think I found like two or three readers, and one of them was from like the 1960s. It's really strange. But thankfully, we've got lots of modern Hindi content, so I could probably just go onto Wikipedia and binge articles after a certain point, and I'll just build up my effective vocabulary. So, what is my aim? So, as you can see down here, I've planned it up to December. My uh, my family are planning on going over to India, um, like my my wife's side, uh, around about around about December time. So, the idea is that in this period, first of all, I'll get a pretty good idea of whether this um, this sort of methodology works or not, but I'm aiming to get to a level where I can kind of have a conversation. So nothing, nothing overly basic. I want to be able to have a conversation pretty comfortably. So I'm thinking like, um, like lower intermediate level. I don't want to say anything like like B1 or anything like that because I don't have the spec specifics to mind. But I want to be out of the um, of the beginner stage by December. Will this actually happen? Um, I actually, I, I you know. I see the script, and I've dealt with other scripts in the past. But Devon Agri is um, is significantly um, it has significantly more characters than anything I've ever experienced before. Now it could be that I just blast it in the first month, which is something I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if I actually do because it's only seventy characters. But I think that that's really going to hold back my reading, and so that will mean that like lower frequency words are going to be you know that they're going to be harder to come across. So I mean that's not really. That doesn't really matter that much since I'm aiming to do conversation, but um, I don't know how quickly I'm gonna gonna go at this. I think I might surprise myself at um, how quickly I get things. Not uh, not in terms of the words. I think the words would be quite difficult, but I think the grammar will be pretty easy because it seems as if it's um, you know there's certainly um, similarities, certain similarities with um, Latin that I've observed, and at least the nouns appear on the face of it to be um, simpler. Than, than Latin itself, although there's more um, there's more going on with them. So in this first month, I'm expecting to finish my um, my introductory textbooks. So um, I currently have uh, Pingu learns Hindi. I've got a Kindle version, so I've, I've worked through part of the first lesson already in that. I have Practice Makes Perfect, which is a book actually um, just across the uh, the table from me here. Right now. Uh, I don't have um, the absolute beginner course here yet, but that's coming in the mail. So I'm, I'm expecting um, to um, to finish these within the within the month. Why, and like you might have a weird question: Well, why have you picked more than one textbook? Well, the reason for this is something that um, I got from Stephen Crasson actually, and I sus and I've also seen similar things in Paul Nation: is the importance 
of having as much input as possible. And if I have more textbooks, that means more input. So that means that I will have a greater mastery of the basics of the language. So with these books, the aim is I'm going to go through a textbook as much as possible. And if I get to a point where it becomes a little bit difficult, at that point, I'll switch to another textbook until it gets too difficult and, you know, as it goes. And the effect that happens with this often is that as you grow in the language, the things that become more difficult so all of a sudden become easier as you, you know, you experience more content in the language. So, besides that, uh, this is going to be about half an hour of each day, I think, the, the grammatical instruction. So, going through the lessons in Pingu Learns Hindi, uh, Practice Makes Perfect, which seems to be a lot of drills, and um, the absolute beginner course, that's going to take about half an hour of my day. The other hour and a half, I think I'm going to use on the learn Hindi through English because that seems to be quite expansive. There's like 50 hours of content or something crazy like that. And it'll also be presented in a way that's audible. So the fact that I can hear makes makes uh, speaking more easy as far as I can know, or easier. Uh, I noticed this with Latin actually. Um, if you get lots and lots of audible input, you, you become to get, you be, suddenly become better at, um, at speaking. At least you get lots and lots of it. So I figure listening through things um, is, is a pretty, pretty high priority. Um, I'll also include in this hour and a half any audio files that come with, um, with the teacher self, um, Absolute Beginner Course, because I know that they have them. But my experience with, um, with Teach Yourself is that there's often quite a steep learning curve. So, um, you know, I don't know if I'll get through that. So, I'm hoping to have these um, these introductory courses, with the exception of the Learn Hindi one, done within the month. So, by the 4th of September at this rate. In terms of the Learn Hindi through English, um, as I've said here, I, I haven't actually mentioned it, I'm, I'm thinking of uh, going through it three times, just so I can really grind in the input. So Because they have, like, a, there's example sentences, at least in the couple of lessons I had a brief look at. So, I'm thinking, you know, if I grind that in, if I get the repeated readings, which which actually Nation will talk about, that increases my exposure to the words and therefore my ability to retain the words, which of course is necessary for me to be able to talk or to be able to have any kind of conversation because, you know, you know, obviously I don't understand Hindi. So it's like, well, you know, I need the word to be able to listen through that. So that's the first six weeks, roughly. Uh, that's my plan. My predictions are that I'll probably be done with this content by the six week mark. I'll probably have like an extremely basic grasp on the language. And at that point, I think I'll begin having conversations with my wife and journaling. Hopefully I'll have the Devon Agri script down by then. Um, so I've got down here, you know, 15 minute conversation a day, you know, 15 minutes, uh, you know, writing the journal and stuff like that, you know, getting, getting it into me. Um, after that, um, I'm planning on emphasizing very, very strongly listening because undoubtedly even though i all know the devon agri script it will be much more efficient in terms of the amount of amount of words that i can get into my head to listen because of the simple fact that i can listen <laughs> it's going to sound a bit weird listen quicker than i can read so um you know I, I could be reading like the devon agri script words you know maybe 20 a minute right but if i'm listening at a rate of 60 a minute or um you know 100 a minute you know i'm going to get a lot more in my mind and therefore I'm going to acquire more language because I'll get more repeating of the words and more exposure to grammatical structures. So that's going to be my real real strong emphasis. Do I think that I can get to a lower intermediate level by uh, Christmas basically? Um, I, I'm going to say this for the sake of my own posterity because uh, for, for the sake of my own um, you know my own ability to analyze when it gets to Christmas. I think that I can. I, I think it's going to be um, it's going to be quite difficult and quite a slog. Because um, there's not very much in the way of, um, of explicitly beginner Hindi content except for an insane amount of children's books. And, um, you know, that's going to be pretty um, pretty rough, I, I think. Um, one thing that might get in the way is actually the... Um, <laughs> ironic, I mentioned it right now. Um, uh, we have a little boy uh, coming and he will be born in the next couple of days. And so I'm expecting him to absolutely scream the place down. <laughs> As as a little one, you know, um, you know, it, you know, like four in the morning. So that might damage my ability to retain things. It might also have like a like a funny effect where um, you know, because my sleep will become polyphasic, that might actually improve things. This sounds like kind of a long shot, just popped into my head. 
uh, but who knows, right? Um, that might hold things back. Um, but in any case, I think even if it does hold things back, I should begin to see the effects of the method fairly, I'm hoping, quite quickly. So, um, you know, let's see how it goes. In any case, uh, if you guys have got any good introductory Hindi resources, I would really appreciate them, particularly audio. Particularly audio is going to be really important. So, um, if you could paste them in the description or give me, um, you know, I don't know if you can really give me links in the description of the YouTube video because of, you know, how the comment sections work. But, uh, you know, give it a shot. I'd really appreciate if you do, if you actually manage to, uh, yeah, like, uh, tolerate this. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.